Welcome to the Lovish Podcast, a practical weekly podcast centered on mental wellness, faith, relationships, and you guessed it, love. I'm your host, Sita Hood, a licensed clinical social worker. Now, sis, I should mention before we hop into the show, this is not a substitute for a relationship with a licensed therapist. You ready? Let's get it. Welcome back for another amazing episode of the Lovish Podcast. And we are jumping right back into our relationship series. I'm so excited that you guys have been loving all the episodes that we have been coming out with. And there was a lot of great feedback for the relationship series. Um, the first episode on expectations. So we're back, sis, and this week, I'm going to need you to grab your coffee, grab your tea, whatever you prefer in your mug, honey, and let's jump into something that's a little bit uncomfortable, evaluation. So first off, nobody really likes to talk about evaluation, evaluation on our performance at work, evaluation of how our child is doing. If we even think about new moms or new parents in general, when you take your child to the doctor for maybe that first week visit or whatever, the doctor has to do an evaluation. Forget even that first week visit. When you're in the hospital, there's an evaluation of how well your child is breathing, how your child looks, you know, when you are, let's say, waiting to purchase a home and there has to be an evaluation on the quality of that home, all forms of evaluation make us a little bit uncomfortable and most of us feel a little bit weird about them. Like we might be excited for the end result or getting a good report, but there is probably going to be some anxiety before you even get that report. Because even if I do everything that feels perfect for me, the evaluation could still come back with a mark against me. And that doesn't feel good because it means I'm not perfect. (laughs) No matter how much we talk about how perfection doesn't exist, I know that there's some of y'all out there like me that still strive for perfection. And the Holy Spirit has to reel us back in and say, baby girl, sit on down. (laughs) In reality, it's important for us to regularly evaluate everything in our life so that we can make sure that we're staying safe. And that's in every capacity. Evaluation of our cars, evaluation of our babies, evaluation of our relationships. All of these evaluations are designed to make sure that things are functioning appropriately. And then for those of us that like to use social media, let me take it a step further and bring up another reason you should evaluate your relationships. You should be evaluating your relationships because that allows you to set appropriate boundaries. If you have appropriate boundaries set, then you might not end up so frustrated in your relationships. If you are not frustrated in your relationships, then you don't have to be on a gram venting to the world all of your entire business, sis. You also don't have to be salty because you feel like, you know, you got played in a relationship or whatever the case is. So we have to evaluate our relationships. And I hear you when we talk about evaluation and expectations and things of that nature. A lot of people want to know how. So let's discuss Let's talk about the assessment. The first thing I want you to consider when you are evaluating your relationships is what is currently happening in the relationship? Is it a positive thing that's happening or is it a negative thing that is happening? What is currently working in the relationship? Because the reality is there are some things that are allowing the relationship to function 
in working order. You do have some positives probably mixed along with negatives. Even if the person that you are in relationship with that you are evaluating is a complete and total (laughs) a-hole, there is still a positive to be found in there because perhaps that's the person that God is using to build your character. So that's one positive aspect. Okay. They, they getting up under their skin. They, they doing their job, you know, but no, that's partially a joke, partially real, but let's just take a romantic relationship. For example, what is currently working? Maybe you guys speak the same love language. So that works. You all speak words of affirmation to each other consistently and you feel really built up by this person. So that's not really an area, but maybe where you're struggling is actually in shared household responsibilities, right? So evaluate what's happening in the relationship, what is working and what makes it work. So is it working? For example, he always takes out the trash, but it's only he's taking out the trash because I'm on him about it. Or does he take out the trash because he just wants to? He's invested in this relationship and in this house and in our physical space. So he cleans up behind himself. He does laundry. He does all these things that I don't ask him to do. Evaluate what is working and what is making that thing work. After you evaluate what's working and what makes it work, the next thing I want you to look at is what is not working. And why is it not working? So what is the problem? What are your biggest frustrations? And now granted, we are always going to have a one-sided view of situations, but from your perspective, what is the root cause of that? So what's not working and why? What's the root cause based on your perspective? So, for example, perhaps he's not really doing his part to clean up the house and that really frustrates you. And because it's so frustrating, that's all you can see. You can't even see beyond to the love language and the words of affirmation and all of that. But if we step back and do an assessment of why it's not working, why this part is getting under your skin, well, the man is working 80 hours a week. So he's exhausted when he walks in the house. He's pretty much eating, sleeping, and then heading back out of the house for this particular season. That's a pretty good reason. But if we can't take into account what adjustments need to be done or even to see what the problem is and why the thing is not working, it's harder for us to make a plan to move forward. The next thing I want you to think about in the assessment phase is, is the relationship in a certain state based on a specific situation that was never addressed. Sometimes in our relationships, there are situations that come up that, you know, get up under our skin. They really bother us and make us feel some type of way, sis. And we just decide, and we just decide, quotation, I'm going to be the bigger person and I'm going to let this go. And in a lot of situations, yes, that's a good perspective to have. But sometimes it's more conflict avoidant. It's not necessarily that you are wanting to be the bigger person, more so that you want to not jump into some conflict that needs to be addressed. And that is a dangerous area to be in because if you're allowing too much conflict to go unaddressed, you are just creating bigger holes within your relationship. So let's say you are involved in a friendship with someone and something happens that's kind of off-putting to you and you don't really address it. You think that this person is doing this thing intentionally. So you say, I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to let this go. I'm just going to sweep it under the rug for the time being. And then it continues to happen. And you are 100% sure that this person is totally against you. And in reality, the person's not totally against you. 
this is just how they were raised. This is just all they know. <laughs> this is all they're familiar with, right? But you never find that out if you don't address what is bothering you. So that question for the assessment again is, is the relationship in a certain state based on a specific situation that was never addressed? The opposite side of that question is, is it off balance because you changed or because they changed? Because people have the freedom to evolve, to grow, to change, to become different people. That's totally okay. And sometimes when God is growing you up and getting you to a place where, you know, you've evolved to this certain point in your life, you do outgrow people. You can outgrow certain relationships that you thought you would be in connection with for forever. And the reality of that is that hurts. It hurts sometimes. Now, sometimes, child, let's be clear, it's easy to let them go, okay? Because some of these relationships out here are raggedy, honey. They're raggedy. And if you find yourself in a raggedy relationship, girl, we just gonna go ahead and give you permission right now to exit stage left without feeling bad, okay? No, I'm just kidding. For real though, uh, I'll tell you what to do about that in just one second when we get to the next part. But we have to acknowledge the loss of those relationships that were truly valuable to us and the ways that the Holy Spirit will push us to release some people because we've changed or maybe they have changed. And this new person that they are is not in alignment with who God wants you to be in connection with or with who he is calling you to be. The next part of assessment is considering, has the entire relationship simply shifted, right? Like, you know, is it in a certain state? Is it that they changed, that you changed? Okay, push all of that to the side. Has the entire relationship shifted? Is it a shift that makes you feel uncomfortable because you're triggered or because you are challenged to do more or be more. Now, let's pause here for a second. Triggered. Okay, you can be triggered by something and it could be a negative experience. For example, you just exited out of a relationship with a quotation mark friend where they were... Uh, they used a lot of put downs in the relationship or they didn't really value your thoughts. They weren't really encouraging. They were more so discouraging by the small comments that they would make. So you just kind of put that relationship where it belongs. And now you encounter a relationship with someone else who has the exact same characteristics. And then you kind of get triggered in that relationship and you start to treat this new person like the old person. And maybe that's not what it should be. So evaluate whether you're feeling triggered. Now, there's a difference between feeling triggered and feeling challenged. If you are feeling challenged to do more or be more, we got to acknowledge that because I'd argue that that challenge is probably from the Holy Spirit. Do you feel convicted about certain things that you do when you are in this person's presence? Do you have a desire to be more, to do more, to go harder in natural life or even after God when you are in the presence of this person? So sometimes challenges can be very positive experiences, and it's those very challenges that God uses to shape and mold our character. So just like there are negative experiences that can mold our character, God uses some people that challenge you to be like, man, sis is really on her game. And I said I wanted to do that, and I'm over here playing. And it's not anything to feel bad about and stay there, but there is a thought of, a, of being challenged that can push you into your purpose, right? So when you're in this assessment phase, I really want you to spend some time being honest and considering what is happening in this relationship. The next phase is the determination phase. 
So in this phase, you have determined your expectations for the relationship. If you have no clue what I'm talking about in reference to expectations for relationship, I want you to pause this and head on over to episode 27. That's the episode right before this, where we talked about relationship expectations. Now, the determination. I want you to know, honey, <laughs> that I hear you in the spirit, even as I'm recording this. And some of y'all are like, cut it off, cut it off. All right. Y'all ready? Take a little sip of coffee. Sis, release cut off culture. It does not serve you and it can become a way to avoid healthy emotions to help you appropriately end relationships or start new relationships without baggage. Now, in my mind, I want to define just a little bit cutoff culture. Cutoff culture is, you know, if you don't know, the instant cutoff. Someone does something I don't like, cut off. Somebody does something I'm not uncomfortable with, cut off, distance, cut off, cut off, cut off. It's like that Oprah meme. You get a car, you get a car, you get a car, you get cut off, you get cut off, you get cut off. No, slow it on down, honey. Because after you cut so many people off, then you'd be sitting there wondering, how come ain't nobody calling me on a Friday night? It's because you cut everybody off, honey. Okay. <laughs> so pause for a second, pump the brakes. And I want you to really sit in the uncomfortableness of what is happening. So let's say you've done your assessment. You see some things that you're uncomfortable with. If you cut off a relationship incorrectly or inappropriately, then you risk bringing baggage into your new relationship. Now, I want to make this 100% clear for the folks in the back. Sita is not saying to stay in a toxic relationship. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying to ask God these questions. You ready? If you're not in a position to write it down, bookmark this section of the podcast so you can come on back and write these questions down. If you are not quite ready, but you are at home, go ahead and push pause. And I want to give you some questions to ask the Holy Spirit. Ready? All right. Once you have determined that you're not satisfied in the relationship, these are the questions that we're going to bring to the Father, to Abba. Holy Spirit, what is this person's role in my life? If I am to transition them out of my life, when does that happen? How do I transition them out of my life? And I need you to make it clear if they are supposed to be completely out of my life or if they are supposed to just have a little bit of distance between us. Some people and experiences we are actually meant to have for the wonderful human being that God is trying to cultivate. He knows the gifts that he placed inside of us. And if we resort to cut off culture so quickly without properly evaluating the relationship, evaluating what it was that bothered us about this person that triggered us in this thing, We run the risk of, again, taking baggage into our future relationships. But more importantly, we miss the golden gem that God is trying to water inside of us. That gift, that nugget, that thing that's supposed to rise up as a result of experiencing this. We will miss that thing because we're ready to cut it off. If we think about a woman in labor What if she just close her legs and be like, no, I'm good. She runs the risk of killing the gift inside of her. That gift that was going to change her life. That gift that was going to change the lives of so many other people around her. That gift that was going to bring so much joy to her because of the pain that she feels in the moment that she's in labor. She cuts it off. She misses what God has for her. That's why it's important to take these questions to the Holy Spirit, because we can't make the determination if this person is appropriate for our lives. 
appropriate for the season, how to treat this person. You have to hear from the Holy Spirit on how to do that. Because again, you run the risk of throwing away or killing the very thing God put inside of you to bless you. And I know that some of y'all are like, okay, so we've talked about the assessment. We've talked about the determination. We've gone through all the steps, but sis, what I really want to know is how to do it. Hang in there with me. We're going to take a brief break and have a word from our sponsor for this episode. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the communication, what to actually say. Hey, sis, did you know that women of color are three times more likely to develop chronic illnesses than their peers? And that number doubles for working women and caregivers. Who child, I don't know about you, but I am tired of seeing black and brown women overworked, overwhelmed, and stressed out, compromising on our quality of life. You know that relaxed feeling you get when you're at Sunday brunch spilling all the piping hot tea and it feels so wonderfully therapeutic? Yeah, girl. That's how our participants say it feels to be at our events. Girl, we see you, we get you, and we have created an intimate space just for you. Consider this your personal invitation to join us for the Pink Emerald Retreat. At this three-day intimate weekend retreat for recovering strong friends, high-performing career women, and boss babes, you're going to walk away with a stronger sense of peace, customized plan of action for daily living, and a unique blueprint to help help you walk more confidently in your God-given assignment. I can't wait to meet you, boo. Click the link in the show notes to apply for the retreat today. Okay, let's close out this episode. We talked about the assessment. We talked about the determination. Now let's talk about the actual communication. Before we even talk about what to say, I want you to think about the conversation's logistics first. How do you want to do this? Do you want to do it over the phone? Do you want to do it in person? Do you want to do it in a private place? Do you want to be in a public place? What do you want? What do you think is going to work best? Then I want you to think about when you want to do this. So for example, if you are about to end a relationship or even place some distance in a relationship and you feel like it's important to have a conversation because side note, not every change in a relationship requires a conversation because perhaps Holy Spirit just wants you to create some distance with without talking about that, then you want to really be mindful. Like you probably don't want to have this conversation, you know, if this person is dealing with some heavy stuff, like perhaps someone close to them being sick or dying, you probably don't want to have this conversation just before they have a major life event to throw them off. So you want to really be intentional about when you want to have the conversation. Then I want you to think about when is best considering morning or night. Are you a morning person? Are they a night person? When do they tend to be in their best headspace? For me, I'm in my best, most functional headspace um, between the hours of like 11 and 5 o'clock. Before then and after then, yeah, we just (laughs) call say a prayer because I'm not really necessarily fully engaged. My brain kind of could, you could take a chance and maybe get a CETA that's fully engaged and my brain is working, or you could get a CETA where my brain feels like mush. I don't know, sis. We, 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 we got to figure that piece out. But 
Anyway, consider, are they a morning person or a night person? Are you a morning person or a night person? When do you feel like they would be uh, able to respond in the best way to this conversation, especially if it's a tough conversation? Are they the type of person where they typically need things broken down to them gently? Or do you just need to hit them straight up no chaser with how you feel, honey? Debate on these things. Consider these things before going to the Holy Spirit and asking, Lord, when do I have this conversation? And even before we get to the actual stepping to the person, I want you to mind your own defense mechanisms and triggers, because what we're not trying to have is you go talk to your friend about how she don't wash dishes enough and you end up getting triggered by something she said. And now y'all boxing in an apartment like no, sis. No, 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 no. Consider also whether you are in a good head space. Are you guys in a good space? Or is there tension that's already in the relationship? Because how you confront somebody when the relationship is already tense is going to be distinctly different from how you confront them when the relationship is in a good space. You probably have a little bit more flexibility when the relationship is in a good space. Also, I want you to be paying attention to your body. What are you observing about your body One, as you think about having this conversation, two, when you are in the conversation, and then three, just after the conversation. Are you anxious? Is your body tense? Do you feel excited? Do you have nervous energy? Do you have bubble guts? Like really pay attention to what your body is saying. Because sometimes when we feel like we don't have the words to articulate what's happening, we can pay attention to our bodies, which can give us clues on how we feel. And if you are struggling to write all that down, girl, don't even worry, sis. I got you covered. Y'all gonna want to check the show notes because I put some worksheets in there for you to give you an exact script of what to say and how to say it. So we kind of talked about with this communication piece, the logistics of personality type and when it might be best and different things like that. The worksheets are going to give you an actual script and then there's space on the worksheets for you to write out your own script. All right. I got you, girl. So if you need some help remembering how to do this relationship evaluation, just remember ADC, Assessment, Determination, and Communication. It's time to talk about what I've been loving, product recommendations, shout outs to family and friends, and overall gratitude. Let's get into it. Okay, girl, this week, I got to be honest with you. I am loving the Slay Your Workday. If you don't know what Slay Your Workday is, it is a live virtual co-working experience that I've been hosting. We just got done um, hosting our third Slay Your Workday, and we have our fourth coming up. So I'll put the link for that in the show notes, too. But it's Pomodoro style virtual work session. And it's primarily for people who want accountability, getting their work done as they work from home or just a little bit of company while you work. There's light music, there's breaks. And I've started to incorporate like stretches and things for us to get our bodies kind of moving and staying active a little bit in between the work sessions. But Literally every time we've hosted these or I've hosted these, the women come on and say that they have gotten work done. Maybe not a huge project, although some people do get huge projects done, but they've gotten some really intense focus and they've been really productive. And I want to point out that during the times that we're hosting, there are moms on there with little kids. So if you have not joined us for a Slay Your Workday session, sis, you got to come on in and let's slay this work together. That's what I've been loving this week. All right. I hope that you enjoyed installment two of our relationship series on evaluation. 
In today's episode, we covered ADC, the assessment of evaluation, the determination of evaluation, and then the actual communication involved in evaluating your relationships. If you enjoyed today's episode, share the love, boo. Share with your auntie, your mama, or your co-worker. Then head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. We love reading reviews and posting your reviews on social media. Well, that is all I have for you this week, love. I'll see you out in these social media streets.